God be the glory. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll have the Emmanuel Baptist Church praise team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God glory today. Let's give God the fruit of our lips on this evening. Hallelujah. Hasn't God been good to you today? Hallelujah. He woke you up this morning. He started us on our way. Hallelujah. He gave us breath in our body. Hallelujah. The activity of our lips. Hallelujah. We can give him glory because he's been good to us. He deserves it today. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. And bless the Lord.
time we'll have scripture reading by Elder Wesley Mozella. Selection and greeting followed Sister Patricia Mutri. And we'll have a response from a visiting friend, a brother, a sister. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited tonight. I'm a task to read the scripture tonight, but I just want to, you know, just give my pastor a little shout out right now. Amen. First lady. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. It's okay to give him a hand. Amen. For their 14 years. Amen. Pastoral anniversary. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited. Amen. Because we truly have a, truly have an awesome sound, righteous man of God that loves the Lord. Amen. You can't love people if you don't love the Lord. How about that, somebody? Amen. Let's get into this word, because I'll get excited. We, we, we come to celebrate. This is not a funeral. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're coming from the book of Romans. Amen. The 10th chapter. Glory to God. We'll be reading from for your hearing tonight, the 11th verse through the 15th verse. Again, Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 11 through 15. Amen. And it reads, For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah, somebody. For then shall they, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not heard? I believe. How shall they believe on whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Hallelujah, somebody. Now, and now how shall they preach except he be sent? It is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of good news and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. I have read Romans the 10th chapter, the 11th through the 15th verse. May God have a blessing to the hearers and the readers of his word. Amen.
far. Anyway, it's time for the offering. I'd like to Sister Mutri said the pastor spoke on remember your pastor last Friday. And we're gonna ask you to remember him financially. He's been good to you, for you. We need to remember him. And like a young fella in New York, Reverend Ike used to say, he don't want to hear no music with money, change. No nickels and dimes. So this is your pastor. And for the visiting guests, we ask that you do likewise. Don't muzzle the ox. Uh, they feed you. See the sign of the church.
this time we're gonna have the introduction of the speaker. Or none other than Sister Elaine Woolsey. And she will bring us a harmonic solo following the introduction. Bless the Lord for her today. Come on, give God the glory. Come on, give him the glory. Don't do it because I tell you. Just sit and think about the goodness of Jesus. Come on. And all that he's done for you, you can still praise him. Come on, give him the glory. Give him all the honor.
amazing. He's wonderful. He's mighty. Hey, bless Lord, well, I am on an assignment. And I don't want to make you happy twice. Happy to see me stand up and happy to see me sit down. So pray with me, amen. Ooh, come on, let's give honor to where honor is due. Let's honor this man of God, Pastor Miller. Come on. And Lady Miller. Come on, come on, come on. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Hallelujah. 14 years. 14 years. I give honor to all the pastors that's here in the pulpit to all the evangelists, all the missionaries, all the deacons, all the mothers. I give honor to everyone that's here tonight. Amen. We are going to get right into it. But I tell you one thing, I feel like taking a lap right about now because I feel breakthrough in this house. I feel the Shekinah glory in this place. The only thing that we have to do is come with an expectation. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Expecting God to move. Yeah. Expecting him to show up. Right. Expecting him to bless. Yeah. Expecting signs and wonders and healing. How many of you need a healing tonight? How many of you need your kids saved and set free? Yeah. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. open your mouth to say it is well it is well come on look at your neighbor the neighbor it is well oh. i want to get invited back okay so i'm going to keep myself together we are here tonight to encourage and honor my brother and my sister in the lord and Pastor Miller, as I was just sitting at my desk last night, my mind went on our fathers. It is a privilege for me to grace this platform tonight. I know that our fathers, the late Pastor James Miller and the late Bishop George A. Footman is having a conversation right about now, hallelujah because their children they yeah. are crossing the same path. Yeah. So I am at home, we are family. Yeah. Our fathers work together, if you don't know, I'll give you a little history. Our fathers work together. My dad will pack every one of us up in our big blue van to leave Liberty Park in North Charleston. And we all will get in that van and drive to Mount Holly, where we will have revivals and tarrying service and coming together worshiping the Lord. I call it a blessing to have been raised in a household of holiness. Yeah. Our fathers, they didn't play with God. That's right. That's right. They stood for God. They, they stood for the God that they preached about, the God that they sung about. Yeah. So it is an honor and a privilege yeah. to be here tonight celebrating this man of God. In the book of Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child the way that he should go and when he is old he shall what after speaking with pastor footman yesterday now this is not my words pastor miller he said yeah me and pastor miller went to north charleston high school together he said we were little rascals that's what pastor footman said That's what he said. I said, okay, don't you get me in trouble. He said, yes, we were something else at North Charleston High. He said, little rascal. 
But Pastor sent his love tonight. He is in Columbia and wasn't able to be here, but he sent me. So I am on that assignment. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you guys would just pray with me. I feel Jesus in this house. If I were to use for a topic, our theme is understanding the assignment. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you got to understand your assignment. Come on, tell the other neighbor, you've got to understand the assignment. An assignment is a task that someone in authority has asked you to do. As an assignment, an assignment is a mission or position to which a person is assigned. Every last one of us here tonight have a position in the body of Christ and a mission to fulfill. And God has perfectly equipped us to succeed in that assignment that he has for each and every one of us. So tell your neighbor, say neighbor, you're not excluded because God has need of you. We are one body, but we have many members. When God gives an assignment, it's very important to stay close to him through prayer. Not only in prayer, but reading his words, word and getting direction. In the 119th division of Psalms, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my pathway. So tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, if you don't know what you have been called to do, I beg you that you get in the presence of God because he has assigned a purpose for you. If you would turn with me quickly to the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter, the 16th through the 28th verse, I hear the baby saying amen. Amen. While you turn there, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And Pastor, let me just take a break. The hospitality is amazing. As soon as I walk through the door, I love it. The book was written by Matthew. He was a tax collector. When Jesus called him to become a disciple, Matthew immediately, come on, say immediately, Immediately. left his occupation to follow Christ. Now check this out. If Jesus was to come to some of us, we will probably question him and say, God, you show us me. Let's just be real in the house of the Lord. Are you sure it's me that you wanted me to give up my job and to follow you? And you're probably saying, well, God, what I'm going to do for money? You know how we go? How will I pay my Berkeley electric bill, God? How will my Verizon bill get paid? I can't live without the cell phone. What will I eat for dinner? Tell your neighbor worrying about the wrong things. If God call you, he will sustain you and he will equip you for the assignment that he has placed on your life. Some of us ask too many questions. We need to stand still and listen to the voice yes. of the Lord. Yes. Some of us are talking way too much. Yes. Don't look around now because if you look around, you might look guilty. Just look at the pastor, look at the preacher. <laughs> Stay focused up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
But the good book say, and I'm going to get to the scripture. I know you guys are standing. In Matthew 6 and 34 it says, therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So Matthew refers to the Old Testament to show that Jesus fulfilled his prophecy concerning the Messiah. Getting to the text, Matthew 28, 16, and 20, it says the 11 disciples went into what? Galilee and into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped, but some. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The 19th verse, pay close attention to what it's saying. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach some nation. Come on, just only the one that's going to hear you. Go ye therefore and teach. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then it goes to say the 20th verse says, teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. You may be seated. When we think about discipleship, it is important because we want people to become fully committed to following Christ. Discipleship help believers to grow in their faith, to grow in maturity and wisdom, and build their faith on a strong foundation so that they can de then disciple and lead others to Christ. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. You're just not here on borrowed time. God is calling each and every one of us to be a disciple in order for us to win children for the kingdom of God. We have to present our bodies a sacrifice and the Bible says to be holy and acceptable unto God, which is be not conformed to, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, I'm here to encourage Pastor Miller, but I'm also here to encourage you. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, you've got to be careful of how you conduct yourself out of the, the four walls because people are watching you. They are looking at you. The only Bible that they probably will read is watching your life living. Tell your neighbor you have an assignment, have an assignment. Yes. that was given by God to be a disciple. Yes. The disciples were with Jesus doing his ministry and they saw the wonderful things he would do. They would be able to bear witness to others that he is the son of God and our savior. Jesus gave them priesthood authority to preach the gospel to heal the sick. So Jesus came to fulfill the law. Jesus came to call all sinners so that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. Jesus came to serve and he came to give. Jesus came to proclaim the good news. Jesus came to seek and 
to save the lost. Jesus came to do his father's will to save and resurrect the believers. Jesus came to give us abundant life. Jesus came so that the believers will not remain in darkness. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus spoke seven last words. And the last one said, he said, it is finished. Jesus' assignment was completed on earth. Yeah. Pastor Miller and Lady Miller, I am so grateful and thankful that you said yes to your assignment. I am so grateful and thankful for all who labor in ministry saying yes to your assignment. The harvest is. Yes. In the book of Matthew 9, 34 and 38. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, the Bible says that he was moved with compassion because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. I'm so glad Pastor Miller understood his assignment. Then saith unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And this is the reason that we are here tonight to celebrate you, man of God. After 14 years, God was good and he was faithful to you. Even though it may have gotten weary, you may have fallen down and out, but you still said yes to God. The thing about it, when we go through trials, when we go through tribulation, when we go through circumstances, when it seems like all odds are against us, we want to throw the towel in. Tell your neighbor, no, 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 no. You can't throw the towel in. Why I can't throw it in? Because destiny. Destiny awaits you. Promises await you. The Bible says, to whom much is. To whom much is given, much is required. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but God says he don't want no coward soldier. Because when you go through, you're ready to give up. That's when you know if you have been called by God. That's when you know that you have answered the call because you will stand the test. As I grew up as a preacher's kid, I saw my dad went through all hell and high water stayed with God. People talked about him. They lied on him. They scandalized his name. But he stayed with God. If you don't want to uh, follow him, don't play with him. Tell your neighbor to neighbor, have you been tried in the fire? Hallelujah. The preacher message on Sunday. He said, if you don't bow, you won't burn. Too many of us are bowing to the enemy. Too many of us are giving it to his attacks. Too many of us are falling by the wayside. But God is looking for a disciple who is going to stay in his will, who is going to read his word, who is going to turn
Can God trust you? Down through the end, Pastor. I know it hadn't been easy. People looking in your face, down your throat, as soon as they turn their back or you turn their back, they're talking about you. But the Bible says, touch not my anointing. And do my prophet no harm. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, if you don't have any good thing to say, keep your mouth. Can I 
trust you with my secret. Mm, my, my, my. Getting back to the text because I want to come back. Getting back to the text and I'm about to go. We're celebrating this man of God. And I know, Pastor Miller, if you could sing a song tonight, it will be, I've had some good days. <laughs> Can anyone attest to that? Say, I've had some good days. And I had some sleepless nights. I've had some hills to climb.
say? What does it say? But the word says, after their own lust, they shall keep themselves. Teachers have an itchy years, and they shall. Yeah. 
preacher. Yeah. You're here. Yeah. Oh, God, let me go back to Moscona because I don't want to get in trouble. Everybody want to be a pastor. Right. But they don't want to go through nothing. My God. My God. They want everything to fall in their lap. Sing, I can preach, yeah, you can do all that. But you've got to put work behind it. You have to have faith. As small as a mustard seed. Come on, so you got to work. You've got to put work into it. And you're saying, Lord, Lord, well, why is this not happening? What you doing? As I see this man of God, and the work that's being done, we can truly say God is with him. Yes. And God is with her. When we have Jews in our midst, it's so crucial. It's critical that we take care of them yes. with the utmost. Yes. When you give unto this man, when you sow unto him, yes. and in everything that his family don't have to want for nothing, yes. watch how God work things out on your behalf. Yes. It's okay when you have a true man and woman of God laying before God every week every day to get a word so that they can come, come and encourage you that's the mighty man of God and Father we thank you we thank you Lord Come on, lift those hands. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I didn't mean to wear your patience. I love you. I love you. I can speak on behalf of Emmanuel. We love you, Pastor Miller. Because you cared for us. In such a special way. That's why we praise you, we lift you up, and we magnify your name, oh, that's why.
personal savior. If the Lord should call us home, I'll call you home. Do you know where you were? You would spend eternity. Ooh. If you're not saved, the altar is open. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for life. Thank you for strength. Thank you for power. Thank you for peace. Thank you for joy. In the name of Jesus. Father, you know the needs and the hearts of your people. You know what they're standing in the need of, Father. You know what they're needing before they come to you asking God. Father, we ask that you touch their hearts and their minds and their souls and touch their spirits, Father. Someone may not be feeling well in their body, but we know that you are a God that healeth thee. We know that by your stripes, God, that we walk in healing. Oh, God, we know that you died so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So, Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor. Father, we magnify you. God, we exalt you on this night because we know that you are the King of kings and that you are the Lord of lords. And above you, there is no other. God, we pull on you for strength. We pull on you for power. We pull on you for peace. In the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, oh God, just to come and encourage the man and woman of God to continue in your will, to continue to walk in your newness, Father. Father, we thank you for the covering, the amount of the blood from the top of their heads and to the very sole of their feet. Bless them, God, abundantly, God, more God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we will always give you glory. We will always give you praise. And we will always give you the honor. In the mighty, matchless, omnipotent, wonderful, holy name of Jesus. And before you take your seats, I need everyone that's in this building to put your hands together real quick. And just give God praise because of who he is. Give God praise because he's working a miracle. Give God praise for the healing of your son. Give God praise for the healing of your daughter. Those who are strung out on addiction, God, give God praise for their healing in the name of Jesus. The Bible says don't wait till the battle is over. Let's rejoice now. Shout now and give them praise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's okay. It's already done. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's okay. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, it's okay. 
to be a preacher. Usher is your assignment. If you're a deacon, that's your assignment. You know, so many times we try to take over other people's assignment. We thank you. Pastor Miller, you know how to pick them. Hallelujah. 
At this time, we'll have words of thanks from Deacon Alfred Johns, Jones, and following the remarks and benediction by our evangelist, the speaker of the night, the truth teller. <laughs> and I always said, if you think she is talking about you, it's not her. It's God talking through her to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. sisters and my auntie who thinks she's a sister mm -hmm. yes we have mother reed here we wave your hand mother reed sister cynthia all oh, that came with me wave your hands hallelujah and the evangelist say we bless you thank god for our minister of music minister stephan god bless you we have sister heather here tonight god bless you heather and sister deja just thank God for everyone, for everyone that came. Thank God for you. I know that Apostle tore the roof off last night, Apostle Simmons. That is a preaching machine. I said, oh, Lord, what's left for me tonight? his will. Amen. And I know that's what you guys want, want to. Amen. Because he wants to bless us. There are so much things that he has in store for us, but it comes through obedience, right? I'm not going to, I promise you, I'm not going to preach again. Come on, let's go. Father, Again, I want to get a woman of God a round of applause for allowing God to use her. And thank you for answering your assignment and being here to bring my pastor us a word tonight. To God be the glory. To God be the Say it, say it. Me now. Lift up the voice. 
dismissed. God bless you. Yeah.